what is really striking me is the amazing technology around, right? I mean, it, it, you see the evolution of things going on, it is absolutely amazing. And one of them is 5G, right? We have got a 5G track, speakers speaking on 5G, amazing things happening. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, Rodrigo? So uh, the 5G is an exciting technology. Yeah. Uh, it will provide multiple yeah. new uh, mission critical use cases that are not possible exactly. with the older technologies. Exactly. But we need to keep it secure. Yeah. And exactly. it's not only 5G, it actually starts with telecommunications in general. The communication service providers are actually mission critical Correct. networks. When they are attacked, actually People will not just lose connectivity. They will not be able to withdraw money on an ATM machine or make a payment or call an hospital or call the school of their kids. But 5G actually brings this uh, to a new criticality level, let me point, right. put yeah. it this way. So uh, with uh, connected cars, uh, with remote surgeries, with use cases on, on the healthcare industry, uh, and a 5G network hacked can actually cost lives. You're spot on, Rodrigo. So what, what I see basically from 5G to begin with is the massive explosion of data, right? You, we have never seen such massive explosion of data, massive openness of the network, and the massive use cases which are coming about, which we have never ever seen in our previous technologies. We both have been lucky to go through 2G, Edge, GPRS, 3G, HSDPA, 4G, and now 5G, right? And what we see here is it's all about intelligent edge and intelligent cloud and how we bring the actual value to the customers. And with all these openness and transformation, uh, we also need to think about security, right? And the threat layers, right? What do you see the threat surfaces in 5G? What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, we have a service-based architecture. We have a distributed architecture with computing power being shared between different network functions, between different network slices. So we need to be vigilant about potential lateral movements, escalation of uh, privileges. Right. We have APIs exposed, uh, right. and that's part of the concept of 5G and the value proposition. Exactly. We have the slicing, we have new ways to authenticate uh, between the network functions mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah. We have third-party applications running clo uh, closer to the edge. Excellent. We have. Uh, the number of devices and their criticality increasing very significantly. Yeah. So security is more important than, than ever on 5G. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Rodrigo, right? Because when we look at the kind of way that threat surfaces has evolved, looking at the threat models and things like those, it's also about the edge compute model, how you deploy that securely. We're speaking about the IoT security. We are also talking about polyglot architectures because for the first time we are, we, are, we are seeing open source softwares being used for different components of 5G. This brings in a lot of vulnerabilities, right, along the software. But there are also certain steps what uh, I think the industry is taking also towards securing 5G deployments because yes. it's all about the deployment model, right? Uh, from coming from Nokia and talking with service providers on these different deployment models. What are your thoughts there, Rodrigo? Understanding the topology of a 5G network. So understanding who has the right to do what and when. Automation, automating the audits to the network, automating the responses to the 5G incidents. And to respond to those 5G incidents, we also need to have visibility across multiple areas of the network. It's not only about security logs, Pramod. Uh, we need to go and pick data from the network functions themselves, from the Kubernetes infrastructure, right. from the endpoints, right. from the slicing orchestrator. And then when we have all this amount of data, we need to understand the data that we are getting to create a catalog of 5G uh, uh, security incidents. Yeah. But some of them uh, can fit within rules, Others are not possible to fit within rules, okay. and we need then to use machine learning to learn the normal behavior of uh, a certain part of the network, identify the, the outliers, contextualize it with other information that we have, and then be able to, to, to detect advanced attacks. You have covered a lot of very good points, right? Looking at how to secure 5G, we need to look and understand the threat model, right? What are threat surfaces? And once we understand the threat surfaces, we then try to mitigate it by certain security controls or different layers, right? So what we see is to have 
three different layers to make sure that we are as close as possible to the zero trust model defined by the NIST, right? So we look at inherent security controls, meaning which if you have deployed on something like an Azure cloud, for example, we have some inherent security controls inbuilt into it. Then we look at optimizing the existing security controls of the service providers when we go and uh, look at how to optimize it rather than them buying new products. The third layer is where after finishing the first two layers, we look at giving the end-to-end -end threat layers. It includes looking at the SD-WAN layer, the IT infrastructure, the B2B business, and the telco infra as well, which is very important. And during the conversations, we, we also hear a lot about the SaaS models. Uh, do you hear much about the SaaS models? The SaaS will bring definitely a faster time to security. So Correct. if we uh, want to get the security control in place with SaaS, the time to security is definitely much faster. We can also update the systems with the new incidents and the, with the new attack, attacks that are happening much faster. So it's everything more centralized and, and just faster uh, to happen. That was one of the best thing I liked about this, right? Because whenever we have partnerships, it's not only to provide an extra uh, product to sell. Here we are speaking about innovation. We are speaking not about just giving out a product to the market. We are enriching what they do, right? And for example, you brought up some very important points, right? You look at your, your expertise of so many years of looking at the telecom network and bringing out those specific telemetry up. What Microsoft is then doing there to partner with you is that we also have got our own packet codes and we're learning some stuff over there. But with your knowledge of the telecom layer and our SD-WAN, IT in the cloud infrastructure, we're bringing the whole thing into one. Mm -hmm. So the SOC, what the service providers would have, is a SOC of the SOCs, right? I mean, yeah, that yeah. is a, one of the key innovations what we're bringing. Across all the networks. Exactly, all right? The vendors. And this is what I love about what we are doing, right? Your DNA of Nokia, of the telecom, of the telecom layer, and Microsoft coming together with all these different, different value adds of different enterprises and use cases, that brings to the market what I think the customers would absolutely love of it, right? And this is not uh, the end or the start, this is a journey. And I think we have got a very tangible good journey where we're taking up the key, very important points and going towards the customers to have a key value.